because Congress has the ability to destroy itself, to destroy the economy, to destroy the very government that we've created through reckless, indefinite, perpetual deficit spending. We must protect Congress from itself. Perhaps better said, we must protect people from Congress by requiring that Congress approve any amount of money spent in excess of what Congress brings in or in excess of 18 percent of GDP or in excess of the debt limit by a supermajority vote. We have to have that. It will be followed, and it's absolutely necessary. Now, what's interesting, few, if any, of my colleagues will dispute the fact that Congress should balance its budget. There is, perhaps, difference of opinion, maybe even widespread difference of opinion, as to how best we should try to close this gap, as to how best we should close the gap between the money that Congress brings in each year through the tax system and the money that it spends. There's widespread dispute about where cuts need to be made. But I think all of us agree that we do need to balance our budget. That begs the question, if we all agree, as I think we all do, then why can't we agree that we need to adopt a permanent structural mechanism that will be embodied in the Constitution that will ensure that that actually happens. This proposal remains agnostic as to where cuts will be made. All it says is that if you're going to spend more than you take in, or spend more than 18 percent of GDP, or raise taxes, or raise the debt limit, you're going to do it by a supermajority vote. That's something that the American people support. In fact, 75 percent of the American people support these basic principles that Congress should not, for example, spend more than it takes in each and every year. That brings me to the question of why it is that we should support Senate Joint Resolution 10, the Hatchley Balanced Budget Amendment, and not another proposal 